Today marks January 19th, 2021. This is going to be the basically the last full day that President Trump is going to be the sitting president. Um, it's a very big deal. I just listened to the speech recently, his farewell address, and I got to say, it's almost tear-jerking. Almost. There's no look, crying's not allowed. Crying's not allowed. No crying. So I didn't cry, but look, very emotional to an extent. I think it sort of emotes a sort of it elicits a feeling of, wow, it's over, and I can't believe it happened, but it's it's over now, almost, and you know what? For the people that said, well, you know, Trump's not conceding, of course he's conceding, they're right here. Now, keep in mind, if you, I'm not going to play it because that's 20 minutes, so I don't, I don't want to sit here for that long, but the, the point is of this speech is to sound like, okay, I'm peacefully, you know, I'm not calling for violence, whatever. So when he condemns the riot attack or, or the capital attack, and it's not necessarily like, oh, oh, you guys are fags for doing that. Blah, blah, blah. No, it's saying like, you know, he's, he's, it's a dog whistle. It's not a dog whistle, but it's, you know, optics cucking, which to an extent he needs to do. Of course, we have the second impeachment looming. We have the prospect of handing power peacefully. And the point is to be like, okay, I didn't sabotage anything at the beginning. So don't blame anything that Joe Biden does later on me because I was, you know, hands off. And that's what he's doing. That's why he didn't bring up the fraud. I am 100% sure, or I guess 99.9999% sure, that Trump still thinks that the election was stolen, as I do believe, and I actually know for a fact that it was stolen. Um, it was rigged. Trump won. Was it more than by what he won by in 2016? Who knows? You know, whether you're talking about actual fraud, vote switching, glitches in machines, um, the rules changing, the lack of enforcement of the rules, and a myriad of other things. Definitely Trump won this election fair and square, but of course, life is not fair. And Donald Trump did not lose. It was stolen. And Trump will say, you know, I'm handing over power to the next administration. Notice how he didn't say Joe Biden by name. Why? Because that bastard stole it. So no honor. But even then, he's sort of giving up. I mean, it's not hope, but it is necessarily not giving the the pleasure of Donald Trump conceding, you know. So you're like, oh, president-elect. No, of course not. Joe Biden does not deserve the honor. He is a terrible person, objectively. And I'm not going to go on a tangent about him, but seriously, though, he's really bad. Don't look at – well, do look into him, but, you know, NSFW with Biden, honestly, do not go on 4chan. Um, the, the speech itself covered what he did, right, USMCA, the, the economy, all this. And it's really sad to say, but, I mean, the, the pandemic on paper wiped out the vast majority of his accomplishments with the economy, which is too bad. The unemployment went from, like – 3.5%, which is like the best unemployment ever, basically, to about, I believe, 14.7%. Then for a couple months, you know, close to the election, Donald Trump was, you know, getting the economy out of the hole, right? Um, and, I mean, it's sort of weird that Donald Trump, all of a sudden, you know, all of a sudden, he's you know, being very solemn. He's different from what, what he usually is. He's being presidential and I like it. And it's a little more boring. But to, to recover what I was saying before I forgot what I was about to say, um, his economic projections were pretty good in terms of recovering the economy from, I'd say, let's say August to November, December. It was going well. But apparently, recently, we've lost about 180,000 jobs um, at the last month of his administration, more or less, which is unfortunate. I assume that is because of, uh, what would you call it, other than necessarily the the lockdowns reinitiating, which is true. Um, California went back into lockdown or something. And a lot of the unemployment going up was necessarily the pandemic and the lockdowns associated with it. And, and then it went, went down during the summer when the cases were going down, relatively speaking, and the lockdowns were were uh, lowered in Ohio and Florida, etc., and that was compensating for the overall bad economy because of COVID. And then the China virus came back with uh, the supposed second wave because of the cold temperature, I suppose, and that basically led to Pennsylvania closing down, Michigan reclosing down, whatever, California, etc., and all these blue states all of a sudden started closing which then brought the unemployment back up a little bit. So now we're stuck at, what, 7 or 8%, which is Obama levels, which sucks. And now, 
um, a lot of those uh, metrics that Trump's citing are going to be a year dated and it's going to look bad that he's like, oh, well, before the pandemic, you know, so that's unfortunate. Now, in terms of foreign policy, that's always going to stay there. Now, what I do have a concern for Trump's legacy is going to be what necessarily is the Mexico policy, the immigration policy. It seems like a lot of it is going to be cannibalized by Joe Biden in the future. And again, I'm I'm like all but sure that Joe Biden will be inaugurated unless something crazy happens in the next 24 hours, which I'm very um, you know, I'd be very surprised if it did. And for the QAnon people that are saying that all of a sudden, you know, trust the plan, you know, this is just part of the plan. No, it isn't. This is not a plan. Trump tried to stop the steal and his friends betrayed him. The GOP betrayed him and the Democrats did what they were going to do always, which was to steal, rig and deceive and gaslight. Is it his fault? Not really. But you know what? He got played. He got played. Okay. That's what happened. It's fu- It's pretty much over. I mean, I held out hope until January 6th. Right after that, I'm like, okay, yeah, no, it's done. There's nothing else we can do. No matter what, it's don- uh, uh, the next administration is going to be there, whether that be Kamala or, or Biden, for the four years, right? I mean, what are we going to do? And in terms of the polling, don't trust the polling. Rasmussen says this is, is uh, approval is 51. That's BS. Okay, guys, don't listen to that. There's no way. Um, the Democrat approval of Donald Trump is at an all-time low, If just from my gut. Independents must be like 60, 40 opposing to him. And Republicans must be like about like 80 or 90% for Trump right now. The Capitol riot did uh, lose him approval. People will blame the drop in uh, in um, in his approval on on the Capitol riot, but do not listen to that. That riot apparently didn't move things too, too, too much, first of all. And second of all, his approval rating after November 3rd is irrelevant. Um, it's not going to stop him from doing jack, sh- you know. And again, if the polling looks bad for Trump, he always has the plausible deniability in citing that. In 2016, the polls were wrong and he won. And in 2020, the polls were wrong. And even if he did lose fair and square, their margins were way off. Therefore, the polls are BS. And even a lot of liberals are saying this. A lot of my friends that are liberals are saying that you know, polling is dead and all that, which is completely accurate. You look at the Senate runoffs, and apparently the Trafalgar polls were way off. And that's truly unfortunate. Good thing I didn't put a lot of stock in them. For the Sun Belt, though I did for the Rust Belt, and I think they were right, but it depends on the fraud, of course. Which who knows what happened there? Um, in term, you know, and I do know they were stolen, but I'm talking about the margins exactly. Like, was it a hundred thousand stolen votes in in Georgia? Was it twenty thousand? You know, who no, I I have no idea. Now, in terms of the president, again, he's talking about his accomplishments. The USMCA is a good accomplishment that you can't argue that. The Democrats won't even argue that. In terms of um, foreign policy, I think those are mostly going to stay, although I don't think they're going to be built upon much more. The stance from the neoliberals, Antony Blinken, other people in the Biden admin, are going to be more opposed to Iran than Donald Trump was in a way. Or, not, I mean, not opposed, but more conciliatory, but in like a, a neocon way, if you understand what I'm saying. In terms of Syria, it's going to get worse. In terms of Iraq, not going to get better. They're going to deploy more troops into Afghanistan. I'm pretty sure they're going to do that. You know, antagonizing Russia again, that's not going to be good. In terms of North Korea, things are not going to get better. People are going to see him as weak. People are going to push Biden around and at best just leave him alone. So that's what's going to happen. You know, things could go really south. Go south. You know, China could get its balls and say, you know what? Sleepy Joe's not going to stop us. Let's invade Taiwan. And honestly, I wouldn't feel safe going to war under a President Biden because, you know, that guy does not know what the hell he's doing. So, I mean, that's that's... You know, th- th- this is the way that things are. And it's truly unfortunate mm-hmm. that it's going this way. I didn't predict it would. I didn't, you know, this is the weirdest timeline, guys. You have to understand. Trump's speech right now, I did not see coming. If you told me in 2014, pre- Donald Trump will be president, not only that, but he'll lose in a stolen election to Joe Biden, I would have very much have checked out because that does not make sense. But now that we're in this timeline, it even does not make sense still because we got the China virus, which nobody saw it coming. We got the uh, the Capitol right, which basically nobody saw it coming. We don't even know who planned that, if anybody planned it at all. So it seems completely weird. Trump was not in on it, I promise. 
from what I know. And um, yeah, I mean, this just completely is weird. And at this point, I am ranting, and I am ranting because for a good reason. There's a lot of stuff going on, and you know, I was gonna make a video on Martin Luther King Jr., but I, I said, you know what? Even though the timing would have been well to, yesterday to do it during his holiday, it just made more sense to do this because again, President Trump has less than 24 hours in the presidency, so I might as well cover what is going on um, because there's gonna be four years where he's not president. I'm pretty sure there's also uh, pardons coming up, uh, 50 to 100, right? Pardons and commutations, right? That's going to necessarily. Um, Free a lot of people, you know. I, I think it's going to be Lil Wayne. I hope it's going to be Julian Assange. I hope it's going to be Edward Snowden. I hope it's going to be the the Silk Road guy. I think he was a good guy at least. Um, people like this. Uh, it, it'll be a good populist middle finger to the establishment to free the WikiLeaks guy and the and NSA leak or whistleblower Edward Snowden. And of course, their conduct was not perfect, but it was overall good because it did expose us to many things. Now, I did hear that Donald Trump was going to declassify things, but if he's going to do it, he has to do it within the next like 20 hours, first of all. Second of all, what he did declassify so far, I believe, was the Obamagate stuff, and nobody's found anything important that I know of or, you know, worthy of investigation. He also didn't appoint, at least so far, hasn't appointed a special counsel, but again, I'll talk about what he did in the last moments of the presidency in another video because who knows what he's going to do in the next 20 hours and I don't want to sound stupid. But so far what we do know is that he did declassify the Obamagate stuff. He did declassify, sorry, no, he he's going to issue pardons. Who knows? I'm going to, maybe a special video will be made about that. Hopefully he pardons baked Alaska. And I'm also planning, guys, of making a response video to this Indian guy who made a video, you know, trashing on baked Alaska, documenting his history. Um, and I'm going to tear him a new one. Just kidding. But no, seriously though, I'm going to make a video about that eventually, if you know, if I remember, of course. Um, so there's a lot of video ideas. I just thought that I'm going to cover Trump as long as he's relevant politically, because I mean, when are we going to get another one of these, right? What are the optics? And for all the people that are throwing him under the bus, saying, "Well, Trump didn't do this. Who's Israel first? Okay, first of all, who name one guy who was less corrupt than Donald Trump? Okay. First, yeah, that's one thing. Second of all, when are we going to get a guy who's more populous than Donald, right? And yes, of course, he did appoint a lot of bad people by accident. And in some cases, he just was blissfully un unaware of a lot of important things. And a lot of people might criticize him for missed opportunities, but we're not Monday. Uh, we're, we're not Monday morning quarterbacking this because honestly, what if you were president? What would you do? Okay, that's the thing. You criticize the president for stuff that he could have done, but how would he have known that things would have panned out the way they were, right? Same thing goes for Joe Biden where he said, well, if the president did the travel ban a little earlier, a lot of people would have lived. Well, smartass, Donald Trump did do the travel ban very early on in January, and he was only briefed like the week or two before he did the travel ban. For, so for him to do the travel ban was very ballsy, and he was exactly correct about doing it. And doing it any sooner would have just been icing on the cake. I mean, what do you want? So let's hold fire on Trump criticism for a while, for days, because I honestly don't think that criticizing him right now is going to be the right move. I think the next hundred days in politics will be pretty spicy after that who knows what happens but remember we do have a lot of stuff to look forward to don't get too let down remember that the senate is only 50 50 they can't really get a lot of things done in the senate because they're going to have strict republican opposition i hope and in terms of the you know amnesty that's not going to happen i'm pretty sure because you need to break the filibuster and they're not going to vote to get rid of the filibuster uh and they're also um you know, and if they do try to do some bipartisan BS, Donald Trump and his people will make a response, okay? They will, you know, protest or I think – I don't know what they're going to do. Do the Tea Party sort of protest where they move the party to the right and it worked. Um, 2022 should be a bloodbath and it's going to help Republicans a lot. I think that according – if everything goes to plan, we should flip the House. We will flip the Senate, you know. So I mean, nothing crazy happens. And I mean, Biden's not going to be more popular than Donald Trump, I think. Or at least, like, not honestly, because you know the polls are fake. But still. So there's stuff to look forward to. And again, don't get your hopes up too much either, okay? There's always this, the, there's always a small chance that Donald Trump gets a heart attack and dies, gets assassinated and dies. There's always the chance that he somehow, like, changes his mind and just doesn't primary anyone and he goes retires, which is his right. But still. Don't get your hopes up too much. 
But also at the same time, there is a silver lining in that all this chaos did really show where the cards hold. Okay, people that were really on 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 the that were in the bench were objecting that then did a 180 after the riot. Those people are important to see and. Having this objection and then the after-right response to the objection shows where the senators and the congressmen lie, okay? The impeachment shows where the congressmen lie and the conviction, hypothetically, would be where the senators lie. And we're going to know all of it. This has been the perfect test of loyalty and, and, uh, and party loyalty and in terms of ideological purity, okay? It's a purity test. And we can afford to do a purity test in the next couple months, you know, after Trump's fully out, hypothetically, because... Then we're going to be able to have a weak president that we can criticize endlessly, all the while gaining momentum in the um, in the congressional side, whether or not we're even unified, because the president's going to be so shitty that I think that we'll grow anyway. So, and, and we're going to be able to really purify the party. We're going to have a House majority that's going to be based and red pilled on many subjects. You know, we can primary a lot of people that shouldn't be there right now, whether that be Adam Kissinger, whether that be. Liz Cheney and many others that are going to be on the chopping block in less than two years, guys. This is important to notice, okay? So don't get your hopes too down, but also don't get them high. Um, in terms of my hopes, if Trump were reelected cleanly, my hopes would have been like I don't know a six to an eight, but now it's more like a like a four or a three. But it's not a zero. It's important to not be blackpilled because that's not going to get you anywhere, and. Don't be overly optimistic either because that's going to make you overcompensate and or do nothing at all, which is going to be a problem like QAnon where they say, trust the plan, don't do anything, trust the plan, don't do anything, it's fine. Patriots are in control and that's anything but the truth, okay? So people do need to try. They do need to mobilize. They need to do what's important to you know seize the future for the Republican Party or conservatism in general, but it doesn't necessarily mean – that um, we get overly fanatic as well. So that's what I'm going to tell you. This is a big gray pill, okay? The black pill is going to be that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris are almost definitely going to become the next administration. They're going to do a lot of bad things. They're going to repeal a lot of what Trump did that was good. And they might get a few things through through the Senate the first two years. But on the upside, remember, we are going to, you know, at least I think we're going to flip the House. We're going to flip the Senate. We are going to block anything that that Biden wants to get done, on you know, in 2022 to 24. But not only that, but there's 20 to 2022, uh, and we could probably stop him from doing most of the things, even with the split Senate. And let's also keep in mind that we still have redistricting in our favor. We still have a bunch of primaries to look forward to. Getting rid of a ton of rhinos. We still have probably Trump rallies in the future. We still have a lot of stuff going on for us. And while we are set back tremendously by the stolen election, I still think at the same time there's a lot of silver linings that could really help the, you know, the populist movement. We saw what happened to Andrew Jackson in 1824 where it was more or less stolen from him, that election, through uh, greed and all this. And it ostensibly led to a bigger populist movement with Jackson in 1828. And I hope this happens in 2024, but even if it doesn't, we're still going to do a lot of good by primarying a lot of Republicans that need to be kicked out. And hopefully, if Joe Biden does do a bad job, but let's, you know, for the record, let's pray that he does actually do well as president. But if and when he does do things that are bad, which I'm all but sure he will, we need to seize on that moment. And hopefully, if he fucks up big enough, the left will be set back for years, just like how the right was for Nixon, okay? Set back by a lot. And I hope that happens. To, well, I don't hope, obviously, because that's 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 a bad omen. But I do hope that if that does happen, we do really seize on it and really take control of the of the country and really, um, you know, politically change it and not rig it, but you know, get the people in place in the bureaucracy that are on our side and are able to make things possible. Whether that be immigration restrictionism, whether that be healthcare reform, tax cuts, etc. So. Not everything is doom and gloom, guys. Thank you for watching and subscribe.